Okay, thank you for invitations. I'm Dr. Bansha Chin Chu Chit from Mr. Masad, University of Thailand. Uh, today I'm talking about the bucket handle uh, meniscus tear, how to repair and the results. So thanks my fellows from Indonesia and uh, from Malaysia, Dr. Lisna and Dr. Puta. So um, congratulations for the successful this meeting. So today I'm talking about the meniscus uh, bucket handle. So let's start with anatomy of the meniscus. You can see that the meniscus is the um, uh, mobile on the lateral side and on the middle side is uh, attached, right? And many, many times in the past, we did a lot of bucket handle uh, meniscectomy. So bucket handle is very really common. It's about 10% of meniscus tear. Middle side is more common than lateral side. And 45% associated with the ACL injury. So uh, we found that the patient that came to see us with bucket handle with ACL. Sometimes uh, you miss the diagnosis because the Lachman test sometimes is negative, okay? And not every meniscus had lock at the beginning. 41% had lock at the initial injury and 59% did not lock at the initial injury. So you can see this patient has a bucket handle tear the meniscus but the Lachman test is negative, okay? So that can be happened because the meniscus lock and you have the less anterior translation. This is a classic uh, double PCL side in the bucket handle tear. Uh, so we are dealing with the meniscus tear bucket handle is quite challenging. In the past, we did a lot of meniscectomy. So we need to concern about the tissue qualities, right? Sometimes the patient came to see you really late and the tissue quality is not so good and difficult reductions and the uh, potential of healing is really poor for meniscus. So we need to do the healing stimulations and did a very stable uh, fixation to maintain the reduction and let it heal. Okay, so uh, this is the meniscectomy that we did a lot in the past, right? So nowadays I think uh, we do less and less meniscectomy because we know the destiny after the meniscectomy. You see that seven years, 13 years, and 20 years, knee progress to osteoarthritis very, very fast. Okay. So, uh, repair may not be the end of the story because uh, we still can find that about one third of the meniscus repair bucket handle still fail. So, the fairly late is nearly one third, especially in the young active patients, delay repair and poor compliance. So how to do that? This is my uh, technique. I prefer this position. I put the patient at the end of the, the, of the table and break the table and we put the side support to uh, allow walkers and we can assess around the knee, okay, using this position. Sometimes you need to go to the back of the joint to assess the posterior part. Sometimes you have lamb lesion together with the bucket handles so you can repair all inside from the back, okay. So uh, medial compartment tightness is the, our problem because the knee always really tight and we cannot do the good access uh, to the medial compartment. So I published the magic point. This is a way to open the joint, okay? You draw the line, the posterior cortex of the tibia, and then intersection with the line from the adductor tubercle. So it's about 1.2 uh, centimeters from the joint line. And I show you one uh, example. If you touch this point, you see that the joint will pop and open suddenly. So this is, uh, very good and very reliable magic point. You can release the joint very easy. So another problem is to reduce the fragment that this press. So sometimes it's easy, sometimes it is not, depending on the neglected or sometimes for the chronic meniscus, lock bucket handle is not easy. So by gentle probing and uh, try to reduce using the inside out suture, and sometimes we need to release the scar tissues that holding the fragment. So like this, you can easy, easily deduce, but some patient is not that easy. Another problem is the healing. 
because you know that the meniscus is very poor vascular, so you need to do the good stimulation. So there's many techniques. I prefer the trepination technique. I use the KY to stimulate the capsule. So this works very well. Sometimes you can use the rasping shaver, or uh, you can use the butt clot PRP microfracture. So I think the termination works really well for me. Okay, so you can do inside out, okay, outside in or inside. So the inside out we prefer for the anterior part of the meniscus. Okay, okay. Most of the time I, I start with the inside out first, okay, to reduce the meniscus. So that's work really well. Okay, and also this inside out may help to reduce the meniscus. And all inside we prefer for the posterior part of the meniscus. Okay, using the all inside technique. But very careful when you do all inside for the lateral meniscus, especially the area that cross to the central part. I'll show you later. And after that, uh, after you, you, uh, you repair, you need to identify the saphenous nerve, especially on the medial side, because sometimes you tie the knot over the nerve. The patient will have painful neuroma. Okay, always identify the uh, saphenous nerve on the medial side. Okay. So this is the conclusion. Yeah, anterior part you use outside in. For the body, you use a uh, inside out and all inside for the posterior part of the meniscus. Okay. So this is my trick. After you use the meniscus, you use the closed sit technique. Okay. I always start my reduction from the anterior part. Okay, because from here you can reduce the meniscus perfectly, like you cross the sip. Okay, if you repair the middle first, sometimes it's in it's not anatomic reduction. So you take this um, technique to uh, reduce the meniscus. Okay. So another way, if the patient have chronic meniscus, sometimes the meniscus deform. So I use Mason Allen to flatten the meniscus, to flatten the deformed meniscus, and also improve. The contact area okay so this mason allen works really well for the chronic deformed meniscus okay and publish this technique uh, in the arthroscopic technique don't forget to repair the under surface because if you just repair the upper surface okay the under surface will be open okay and it's not here so don't forget to repair the under surface also okay like the picture i show you Repair upper and under surface of the meniscus. Okay, otherwise the under surface will be open. And we use the all inside technique for the posterior part of the meniscus. Okay, most of the time we very open the posterior compartment of the knee. Okay, so this is the um, safe zone for the meniscus repair, especially the for the lateral side. If you look look at this diagram, if you repair the meniscus close to the root. It's about one centimeter in this area. If you use the anterolateral portal repairing this area, you may damage the vascular. Okay. Another point is the common polyneural nerve. If you repair the meniscus cross to the popliteal hiatus, okay, in this area, sometimes you may damage the uh, polyneural nerve. So this is the diagram, right? Careful the lateral meniscus if you use the all inside or inside out techniques. Okay. So another way to uh, avoid this injury and also avoid popliteal artery is to use the uh, this kind of uh, suture. This is a normal stitch. Okay, the all inside device uh, just launched in the market. Okay, it's quite safe because you can do the all inside for the uh, lateral meniscus repair. Okay, avoiding injury to the popliteus and avoiding injury to those or uh, to the nerve and also the vessels. So this is another article mentioned about the safe zone for the meniscus repair. Really careful if you repair the meniscus uh, close to the root is about five to ten millimeters. Okay, in this area, very risky. I show you some uh, uh, interesting case. This is the 28 years old. He has a lock bucket handles for six months. He came to see me with uh, fraction contracture, really painful. This is lateral meniscus. So I try to reduce the meniscus. It's really difficult because this is lateral side. I cannot open the joint space. Okay. So I try my best because he's still very really young. I use the suture, slowly reduce the meniscus. 
okay, using the inside out and then slowly reduce it back, okay, like that. Okay, and finally we can reduce the meniscus. We use a lot of inside out and then tie the knot, okay. So this is one year after surgery, the patient um, very happy and the meniscus healing very nice. So the second patient is the 32 years old, he has the lock bucket handles it's of the meniscus like that so start we do the um, uh, stimulation using the inside out first for the reductions i use the all inside in the back okay repair upper and under surface of the meniscus so this is six years after the surgery the patient happy he has a very good function and the mi show um, perfect healing of the meniscus this is a very difficult case. This is a complex lateral meniscus bucket handle tear and also have blue tear on the middle side. You can see that the meniscus displaced to the posterior part of the joint, right? And just uh, look at the MRI, you see nothing in the, in the joint space. The meniscus displaced totally. So when we get into the joint, we found that we cannot find the meniscus or the meniscus stuck in the back of the joint, okay? So I try my best to reduce the meniscus back okay use a probe to reduce it back but uh, it's really difficult because um, this is the neglected case okay i try to reduce using the inside you see that we still have gap uh, between the meniscus and the capsule okay so in this situation you should not stop you see that a big gap between the meniscus and the capsule so you need to do the complete release. So I switch my camera to the back of the joint, okay, using the transeptal technique. And then I release the whole meniscus from the capsule like that, okay. So now the meniscus is fully movable. Then we come back to the front again to reduce the meniscus using the inside out, okay. And after that, after the complete release, then we come back to the front again. You can see that we can uh, reduce the meniscus to the capsule using the inside out and also the all inside, okay? So th in this situation, you need to have the complete release. Make sure that you have anatomic reduction, okay? You should not have gap between the meniscus and the capsule. Otherwise, the meniscus will not heal, okay? So this is another interesting case. You have the chronic uh, lock bucket handles, okay? and um, Painful on the medial side of the joint, but this patient can do full extension. You see that it's not like friction contracture. If you have this situation, the patient have full extension. This is a very difficult case. That means the meniscus deform, and the patient can do full extension. But anyway, when you try to do passive extension, the patient will have pain. You see that it's not easy to reduce this meniscus back. So first, we need to release the. MCL using the magic point and then I reduce this deformed meniscus back. So don't cut it. Even if it's deformed, you try your best okay, to reduce this meniscus. I use the Mason Allen's to uh, flatten the, the deformed meniscus, right? And then repair it to the capsule. And I think another uh, important part is that you need to have enough space for the reduction and after that we make a small incision identify the nerve and then tie the meniscus to the capsule okay so this is the chronic bucket handle and this meniscus heal nicely okay after the surgery and the patient are very happy okay now he has full extension without pain okay so in other patients this is the bucket handles um he's very young he's 15 years old I repair the meniscus, I do my best, okay? After that, the patient happy and he can uh, go back to sports again. So that is the surgery. So one year after that, okay, the complete seven months after that, the patient happy and he can jump, okay? But bad news, the patient come back to see me again. One year after that, he back to play football. Okay, and here's bucket handle again. So this time I get in and I found that uh, all the meniscus is torn. But the quality is my meniscus is still good. So I try my best to fix his meniscus. He's just 16 years old. Okay, you should not cut his meniscus. 
So I repair the meniscus like Mason Allen's together with the um, uh, under surface, upper surface repair. Okay. So that's uh, three months, seven months, and one year after that. Okay. So now he's quite happy. It's two years now. Okay. His meniscus heal nicely. So another point is that when you do ACL together with the bucket handle, I will warn you that you should not repair the meniscus first. Okay. You should do the femoral tunnel first, and then you come back for the meniscus repair. Because if you repair the meniscus first, and then you do ACL, you need to bend deep flexion, right? When you're performing the femoral tunnel, so you turn your meniscus, okay? So really careful. Femoral tunnel first, and then come back for the ACL. So the post-op rehabilitation, you should be very proper, okay? First, you need full extension. I think full extension is very important to mold the meniscus and to lock the meniscus do not allow the patient to move too fast okay but for the very chronic meniscus tear meniscus lock i will put the patient in full extension for three to four weeks okay and no squat for six months okay so this is a summary so save the meniscus because this is a unique tissue you need to save it the retail rate is about one third. You need to discuss with the patient that you have good willing to save his meniscus. Use the magic point to open the medial joint space for uh, better visualization and you have more room to work. Okay, don't forget to repair the under surface and proper rehabilitation, okay, for the bucket handle chair. Thank you. Thanks for, uh, thanks, Pancho, for your comprehensive uh, presentation.